Hey, it's Mary from The Daily Sew. Today we're making gift bags. These bags are super simple. They sew up really quickly. They're reusable. They're perfect for that. Just wanted to get you a little something to say thank you type of gift. And you can even use your scraps to sew them. So let me show you how, but first let me get some tea. For this project, you'll need some fabric, a pair of scissors, a pair of pinking shears if you have them. You'll need ribbon, and you can use printed ribbon, you can use satin ribbon, you could use non-washable craft ribbon. These aren't going in the washing machine, so you don't need to worry about it being washable. You'll need some pins and fray check. There's two different ways we can make this bag. I'll show you both. And there's three different ways we can cut the fabric out and I'll show you those. It's up to you. They're all interchangeable. You're going to do what's easiest and what works for what you have. So keeping that in mind, you can cut your fabric out so it's horizontal, meaning we'll make it this way and this will be the top of the bag. You can cut your fabric out vertically, which means the fold is down here at the bottom and the top of the bag here. Or you could cut two separate pieces of fabric and you're going to sew around all the edges. Again, whatever works for your fabric, it's all interchangeable. First thing we're going to do is work on the top edge of the bags. And again, you can use this top edge method for the other layout, any other layouts, but I'm just going to show you on this. So to do the finished top edge, fold over about a half an inch. And then some fabrics like this stiff fabric, you can kind of finger press and leave, but other fabrics like the gingham I used is too floppy. So you're going to fold over half an inch and then you're going to take the raw edge and meet up to the crease that you made on that half inch crease, fold over again, the no raw edge is showing. And as you fold, you'll take your iron and press this into place. Then you'll go to the sewing machine and stitch. And I always stitch on the right side of the fabric because a lot of machines, the top step, the top stitch, the stitch that's on the t comes from the needle, it looks much better than the stitch that comes from the bobbin. So go to your machine and sew that. After you've pressed it, folded, pressed it, sew it down. For the other edge, the pinking shears, you'll fold your fabric up to make, to line up the top edges. Then take your pinking shears. And if you don't have pinking shears, I looked them up on Amazon. They're only about $13 for a decent pair. So line up your top edges. Remember, you want to get picking shears for fabric, picking shears for paper. Don't do such a great job on fabric. All right. And that top edge is done. The next step is to attach the ribbon to the bag. And in order to do that, we're going to attach the ribbon on one side. So fold up your bag as if it were sewn and then you're going to find the center. Fold the one side showing facing up to you. Fold it in half. Finger press. That's simply just pressing down hard with your finger to make a crease. This is showing me the center of the bag. Now the ribbon. To find out how much ribbon to cut what I do is I make a bow, a little bow, and two loops, cross over, through, then I put that bow on the other side, that's as if I was, when the package is done, that's my bow, measure across, I'll go across and then I give it a little bit of time, a little bit of extra wiggle room, that's my ribbon. So now we'll find the center of the ribbon. Also by folding it in half, making a crease. Oh, hold on. Folding it in half, making a crease. There we go. Lay the crease on the crease. 
I think that's about uh, not quite two inches down or so. Pin it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to test it by wrinkling it up and as if it were tied. I think that's a good height down. You don't want it all the, too close to the top because it won't, I don't think it'll work as well. You want a two inches, one and one and three quarter inch, two and a half. All right, so put it on there and then you're gonna stitch that down. You'll go stitch it straight down the crease and back, knot your ends or back tack your ends so it doesn't come off. And on this layout, Again, you have your bag folded as if it were sewn. You want to find the center of one side. So I'm going to match up the side seams. Finger press for my crease to show me the center. Take my ribbon, find the center, and lay it down, pin it. All right, go to the machine and sew these ribbons down in place. Okay, sewn the ribbon down. Normally I would use a thread that matches, but so it shows up on camera. Just stitch the ribbon down there. Now we're going to sew the side seams or the bottom and the side seam, depending. So you're going to do right sides together. Take this out of the way to show it better. Right sides together. Line up your side seams. Get your ribbon out of the way. You're going to take it to the machine and you're going to sew from the top down the side. You can use a quarter of an inch seam allowance. That's just fine. And the reason I say sew down from the top down, that way your top edge stays lined up. When you sew the top layer of fabric, the pressure foot can move that top layer of fabric just a little bit. So if you started from the bottom and worked your way up, when you got to the top, the layer that's on top might be a little bit longer than the layer of fabric that was on the bottom. So if you start at the top, they stay lined up. And you just sew down. It doesn't really matter on a bag like this, but it's a good habit to get into. So on this bag, you're going to sew the two side edges. And on this bag, again, move your ribbon out of place, line up the top. You're going to start here at the top. Sew down to the corner. When you get to the corner, put your needle, leave your needle down in the fabric lift your pressure foot up, then turn the fabric with the needle still down in the bottom, and then continue to sew to the end. Again, back tack to the end. That's called pivoting, just like it sounds. Makes you have a nice crisp corner. All right, go to your machine and sew your bags. All right, you've sewn the sides and flipped it out so the right side is showing. Normally, I would say press that seam and that seam allowance open, but on these bags, you don't need to do that. But we do need to take care of the ends of the ribbon. A lot of ribbon will fray. So even though you're giving these away, let's just go ahead and take care of that. Just trim the ribbon. I always like to do it at an angle, but I don't think it matters. And fray check by Dritz. just keeps the ends of the ribbon from unraveling. Just need a little tiny bit. If you get too much, you can just wipe it away. Let that dry for a second. Let's go ahead and put some gifts in our packages. So, go. Tie this up. And if 
you want to put a gift tag on it, that's easy enough. Just after you stuff your bag and tie it. Oh, come out here. This one might have been a little too close to the top. There you go. Tie it that once, then go ahead and slip a gift tag on, or if your gift tag has that little uh, thread loop, just with, oh, man, my gift tag got too close to the edge. But anyway, you get the idea. You put that on, and then you would tie it, and ideally, there would still be a circle. This one's busted, and it would be on there like that. Now, let me show you an even simpler way to make these bags. This bag I made out of two different pieces of fabric. They put no ribbon on it whatsoever. I pinked the top, sewed all the seams, sides, to make, make it closed up. Put in your gifts. And then you can use wire ribbon. Wire ribbon, wired ribbon, is great for this because it doesn't slide off the bag. Uh, if you use a satin ribbon, that can easily slide off, or more easily slide off. So a wired ribbon is really great for this. Stays put. And again, you can trim up the edges. <laughs> Don't necessarily have to fray check it, depending on the ribbon. There you go. That works too. That was easy, right? Well, I hope you found these instructions clear. And if you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Bye.